Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel. On our channel, we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I am Cherry Lynn, and I'm here with my mom, Dixie and Lynn Forsyth. Hi. Hi. So today, we are talking about unlearning masculine behavior, specifically as it relates to competing with men. Now, don't, not to be confused with being a competitive person. This is more about competing with men. We're going to cover three main points today about how you can learn to not compete with him and ways that you might be doing it and not realize it. We're going to talk about how you can recognize that you're doing those things. Before we jump into the three, why is it bad to compete with men? Well, it depends what you're competing in. If you're playing a game, for example, that it's normal to compete. But if you're competing with him on being like one upmanship, that doesn't tend to help your relationship. It doesn't mean you should never have debate about anything and be right, but where you're competing with him. Because one of men's core needs is competency, if that makes sense. You know, when you're talking about a relationship with a man, you don't want to be his competitor. Right. There's plenty of guys out there. He doesn't need one more. Right. We talk to thousands of women just all the time. We have so much experience with women. And I think what these are the three most common things that we see that women are doing to compete with him. And they don't even really necessarily realize sometimes all three are happening at once. (laughs) We're going to talk about one upping him, controlling him and stepping on his toes. We're going to go through what that means, what an example of each one might look like in your everyday. And then we're also going to discuss a few options of ways you, things you can do instead. So the first one is one upping. Can you explain what is involved when you're one upping him? Like for instance, if he says, I worked really hard at work today. And then she says, that's nothing compared to what I did. (laughs) You think you worked hard. Wait till I tell you about my day. It's like saying I worked harder than you, or I'm more tired than you. If he said to you, I am so tired. I had a hard day. And you said, that's not half as tired as I am. I was up all night with a baby. So you're both having needs that you want filled, but you're, you're trying to get them filled at the same time. And it doesn't really work that way. And it ends up both people feel like, they're invalidated. I know I've done this before. I've caught myself doing this on accident before. I'm sure a lot of you out there can probably relate to getting kind of like into this because you probably did work really hard. You probably do kind of have this need to feel like you want to be validated. But the problem that it results in is a bit of a ping pong match. And then yeah, and nobody wins. Nobody wins. <laughs> no one wins. And so it doesn't work. And you may be doing this and, and it's over and you kind of think to yourself, that didn't really go anywhere. It didn't go well. It didn't in anything. And it doesn't really make anyone feel good. What would be something you can do instead of one-upping him? Um, other than just noticing that you're one I think that's probably the first thing is you need to notice that you're one-upping him. What you could do is if he says, let's say you're exhausted, you were up all night with the baby or worse, the, you were up all night and the baby was sick all day. And so you really, really are exhausted. And he comes home and before you can say anything, he says, I am so tired. You say, I can imagine what happened and then validate that. Then after she validates him, then she could say, yeah, I know what you mean. Cause I'm really tired too. This happened to me. Yeah. I think this could be so many things. It could even just be being right about something and you yeah. want to correct him because you don't think he's right. And you're kind of one-upping him with your knowledge versus his knowledge. It could be a thousand different things. Is it okay for you to win from time to time though? I guess it depends what you're winning at and how deep you want your relationship to be. You know, here's the thing. No, it's very difficult to be perfect at these things. And I don't know anyone who is really perfect at it all the time. It's okay to be patient with yourself. Just try to do it right today or tomorrow. Just say, just for this time, I'm going to try this. I'm going to do this. There may be times you're just, you forget and you're so tired and then you want up him. This is a a process of learning and not competing with them all the time. I like what you're saying about Even if you catch yourself doing it from time to time, it's really important to recognize not doing it a lot. You're not going to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. Your relationship is going to be better. And that's what we want in fascinating womanhood. And you're not going to, you're not going to do without, you're not going to have your needs unmet and just be a sacrificial lamb all the time. That isn't how it works. It's not how it ever works when you understand these principles. Okay. The second one is controlling him. What does that include? Trying to get him to do something that he isn't, he didn't ask you for help for that you feel is important for him to do and trying to get him to do it, even if he may not want to do it. Does this include being manipulative too? Or is that different? Yeah. It includes being manipulative, hinting, 
which we do a lot of because women understand hints and it kind of softens the blow. So it makes us feel less guilty about outright being controlling, but it's still a type of of controlling. It's just less blunt. The example that we have for this one was actually a recent post we had shared on our Facebook group. And it's a very long story. So I'll just briefly share the woman who wrote in said that she's engaged and her fiance hasn't moved out of his parents' house. She has a job. He's still in school. She doesn't know what to do because she feels like he should accomplish more. And the reason why we're including that in controlling him is because she was very, very sweet in how she worded the story and said, you know, I've studied femininity. I've read your books. I feel like I understand all these things, but I'm not getting these outcomes. And I think something really hit home with me when I read that story and the controlling topic that we're talking about right now is because she doesn't really mean genuinely mean to control him. She's not trying to in her head control him, but she actually is because she wants him to move out. She wants him to get a job and she wants him to do all these things on her time. So what is your advice for her? I think I responded to it, to this uh, real sweet girl. You know, each of us, we live in this world and we don't know, none of us know almost anything about anything. When you think of everything there is to know in life, I know a few things about a few things in my life. And it may seem like we know a lot now. So this fiance he doesn't know a lot about the some of the things that she knows about, but I'm sure he knows a lot about other things that she doesn't know about. She means only the best for him. She falls under the category of for his own good mm -hmm. kind of thing, but it, she wants him to have these experiences and know these things, but he will learn them, but he, it would be better for her. Their relationship will be better and she'll be happier if she concentrates on working on herself because working on yourself is difficult, isn't it? We all think, oh, ooh, yeah, I got to work on me. And the fact that it's difficult and we actually have power to do it, but it's difficult. How much harder is it to work on someone else when they don't want it? That's way harder and it doesn't work. And what I would do is focus on him, his strengths, what he knows about, what he's good at. Maybe get one of our, our romantic journals that we've got and write treasure hunt for all these wonderful things about him. She won't have time to think about the things he doesn't know. He'll pick up those things anyway during his life. He's a smart guy. I think she said he's getting a graduate degree. He will learn all the things that she's hoping he'll learn in time. You know, focus on the great things because I'm sure there's tons of them. I think that's great advice. And I, it, I'm glad that we're talking about that in regards to the topic of competing because she is competing with him as well as trying to control him at the same time. And she does not understand that she's doing it. And he is going to pick up on that. In fact, he probably already has. How much you want to bet? She's already made some subconscious comments to him. She doesn't mean to be judgmental or mean, but she probably has because she feels these things. And oftentimes our feelings come out, especially when they're important things like this. And he is not going to be motivated to get out of his parents' house right away, especially if there's a financial part of this puzzle, which I believe that she said there was. There, he's not going to be motivated if he feels like she's already kind of trying to control him and control his life. Well, I think they're, I think she said they're engaged. So that he's yeah. going to be moving out of his parents' house. Yeah. And soon anyway, even though we try to uh, maybe say, I didn't say anything. I felt this, but I didn't say anything. You'd be surprised how much guys can pick up on. There's something that she's upset about, even if they right. don't know what it is. And men need to be accepted for who they are where they are now, just like we like to be accepted for who we are now. I, don't you love it when someone tells you, I like you exactly like you are? It makes exactly. you feel like you can relax. I love that example. And I think that was a good one. And it's a big, it's a big topic and we don't mean to be mothers and we don't mean to compete, but we just do it naturally. And I think just realizing it, that alone is very helpful. Just realizing that you're doing it. The third and last one is stepping on his toes. Now, what does this mean? Well, you kind of get involved in things that you really shouldn't, that are kind of like none of your business. Like, for example, did you tell your boss the things I told you to say him? <laughs> to tell him to, to say to him? Did you say, tell him my suggestions? And women do it. We don't mean to do it. We're trying to help because we're living in the same house. We want him to be successful. We say, did you do what I suggested you do? Well, it's not really her business. Not only that, she doesn't know about everything at his work. I think this one has to do with boundaries. Like you're crossing mm -hmm. into his boundaries and you're trying to compete. And it typically you're also trying to control maybe a little bit, but stepping on his toes is different when you think about the boundary part of it. It is a boundary. And I'm glad you brought that up because we talked about boundaries and fascinating womanhood. Boundaries are really important. They make everyone feel 
safe when you when you abide by people's boundaries. And I, I remember when Bob first finished his doctorate and he sat me down and told me, okay, here's some things that are going to happen in my practice. Do not do this. Do not ask me about this or that because like there's patient confidentiality. Don't talk about any of my work at, at our hospital parties. If I had done those things, that would be definitely stepping on his toes in an area that I really am not that competent in. I'm not, co- I'm not a neuropsychologist. So there's other home boundaries that you can step on too. Like, I don't like the way you keep your drawers. Your, your clothes aren't folded right. It's kind of none, it's not, it's his thing. It's kind of none of your business. So that's what we mean by stepping on his toes. Yeah, there's, I could think of a thousand examples of stepping on his toes that I see regularly in my everyday that we hear about from our group and our ladies that follow us. I, I, I think one that's really common is his health, getting yeah. involved in how he eats, how much exercise, exercise he does. Yeah. Really, that's really not your place. I think that's there could, there can be a time and a place to respond to him, especially if he asks for help in those areas. But it's really not your place to tell him what he should put in his body. And I know that's so hard for some of us to hear because it can it be is, dangerous. It can be actually it can a be. health issue. So you can, for example, watch your husband smoke and you know that smoking is not good for you. And you can watch him destroying his health and you don't really have a right to insist that he quit smoking. It seems awful or drinking. Drinking is another one. You may think he's ruining his health. He's ruining this. He's ruining that. Um, if he's if he's drinking and being abusive, then that that is your boundaries. But it's not your boundary to say, I have to save his life because what I will be left with nothing or, or whatever it is. It's hard. It's really hard. But you've got to realize it when it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work and it hurts your relationship, then you lose twice. Always remember in fascinating woman, womanhood, we're talking about romantic relationships. We're not talking about us trying to control you into doing something. We're trying to help you to learn the principles that it takes to develop lifelong romantic relationships with the men that you love and have it be deeply romantic. So you adore each other your whole life. We're giving you principles that are timeless. And these work, these would work at, A thousand BC, same as now. These work for all cultures, all nationalities, and all races because they're principles. They're not techniques. They're not cultural. They are true things. And that's why we teach them. And by the way, ladies, there's nothing wrong with being a competitive woman in general. A lot of us have a competition need and urge in us. and And it can actually be a talent for some people, especially in business. But this is really about competing with your man or your brother or your dad, any, anybody that you have a special relationship with. Just be careful because this is the view of how men will see it. All right. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click on the links below. If you are interested in Fascinating Womanhood and you want to know more of this discussion, you have to read Dixie's book, Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman. She also has a workbook that is a companion with the book that you definitely need to study if you want to learn more about the Fascinating Womanhood principles. And we would definitely appreciate your support of our channel. You can hit like and subscribe. You will support us in our growth and we will know that you are watching. We are here every week. So don't forget to check back with us next time. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.